A phase diagram gives us the relationship between the pressure and temperature of a substance and whether it's a solid, a liquid, or a gas. All phase diagrams have the same general shape to them. They have these lines that divide them into three different areas, and each one of these areas corresponds to one of the three states of matter, solid or liquid or gas. The area of the phase diagram that is in, in this position over here corresponds to the solid state. So this area of the graph represents all the pressure temperature combinations in which this particular substance exists as a solid. This should make sense to you. We see that this particular state of matter corresponds only to lower temperatures. It does not exist at higher temperatures, which we know to be the case for solids. This area of the graph down here corresponds to pressures and temperatures that correspond to gas. And this also should make sense to you. We see this is an area of space that um, is uh, corresponding to a state of matter that's possible at any temperature as long as the pressure is low enough. And then last but not least, this smaller area of space up here corresponds to the liquid state. Liquid state is one that does not exist at low temperatures and it also does not exist at low pressures. So all of this should be pretty consistent with what you understand. Now, one of the ways that we can use a phase diagram is let's say if we knew a particular pressure and temperature combination, like maybe um, this pressure right here and this temperature right here, we could find that location on the graph, we could see where the point lied, and we could say, oh, okay, we know at that pressure temperature combination, our substance is going to be a solid. There are some unique things on a phase diagram. You might be wondering like, ooh, what if we had this pressure and this temperature, which landed us right here on the graph? What's going on in that spot? This is obviously a really unique spot on the graph. This particular um, space or spot we refer to as the triple point. This is the one pressure temperature combination where the substance coexists as a solid, a liquid, and a gas all at the same time. So it's the one pressure temperature combination where we have solid and liquid and gas all coexisting. And for every substance, there's just one triple point. There's just one pressure, one temperature that gives us this particular combination. There's another point on the graph that I didn't mark initially. It's this point right there. Um, at the end of this line, there is not one here and there's not one here. It's just in this spot right here. This is referred to as the critical point. The critical point is the um, corresponding to the maximum pressure and the maximum temperature. So it's the maximum pressure and the maximum temperature um, at which a substance can be identified as either a liquid or a gas. So it's the maximum pressure and temperature where we can distinguish a liquid from a gas. If we go above the critical point, we can no longer distinguish a liquid from a gas. They kind of like meld together into one state of matter, which is referred to as a plasma. We have um, always identified the temperature and the pressure that corresponds to the critical point, even though we don't do that for the triple point. We have um, this pressure, or excuse me, this temperature down here, we refer to as TC, which stands for critical temperature. And then our pressure up here, which we call PC, that refers to the critical pressure. So it's not uncommon to see those marked, even though we don't do the same thing for the triple point. What about the points that lie directly on these different lines? So what if we had a pressure temperature combination, like maybe right about here, that landed us right on this line right there? Or actually, let's start with this, this line right here. Let's say, what if we had a pressure temperature combination that put us right here or anywhere along this line? What state of matter would exist if we had a pressure temperature combination that was sitting right on this line? So all of the pressure temperature combinations along those lines correspond to pressures and temperatures where the substance coexists as a liquid and a gas. These are all the pressure temperature combinations where the substance is converting from liquid to gas or from gas to liquid. So this is where we see a liquid to gas phase change or a gas to liquid phase change. We refer to that as boiling.
So this is where the substance, or vaporization. These are the pressures and temperatures where the substance undergoes vaporization. Now this might make you start to wonder, um, does this mean that there are multiple boiling points for a substance? Because typically we know each substance to have a boiling point, like water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, and that's it. Um, this is actually correct. Each substance does have multiple boiling points that are dependent on its pressure. So when we say that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, we're basing that off of the atmospheric pressure of water. If we are at normal atmospheric pressure in the United States, most places atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere. And the temperature that corresponds to one atmosphere on the phase diagram is the boiling point of that substance at one atmosphere. So let's label that. This would be, down here, the boiling point for that particular substance. If we move ourselves to a location that has a lower boiling point, so I'll do that in a different color, uh, maybe we, excuse me, that has a lower atmospheric pressure, so maybe we move ourselves to some place where the atmospheric pressure is only 0.9 atmospheres, this would cause the boiling point to change as well. So if we are at 0.9 atmospheres and we try to find the liquid to gas line, we could see that that puts us at a totally different boiling point. So this would be the boiling point that corresponded to a, a lower pressure. This is the boiling point at one atmosphere and in purple, the boiling point at point nine atmospheres. So this is really handy because it allows us to quickly determine the different boiling, boiling points at all of the different um, pressures. We also have the same thing um, for the positions that lie along the solid and liquid line. These are the temperatures and pressures that correspond to the substance melting going from a solid to a liquid and also condensing going from a liquid to a gas. And we can identify the melting points of these substances by uh, looking at the, the corresponding temperature and pressure based on your area. So at one atmosphere right here, this would be the melting point for that particular substance. Let's mark that off at one atmosphere, the place where we reach that solid to liquid line, that is going to be the melting point, I'm gonna put it up above, melting point at one atmosphere. And we could, it looks like there's not a huge difference in the melting point for this particular substance. Every substance is a little bit different in terms of the direction that these lines go. And then last but not least on this graph, we have the positions that lie along this line right here. These are the pressure and temperature combinations that correspond to sublimation, the conversion from solid to gas, or deposition, the conversion from gas to solid.